and the human rights based approach, uh, of course, it's, it's nothing new. Uh, because, uh, or at least it shouldn't be anything new because it's really about honoring the commitments uh, that we, uh, the member states and the international community have undertaken already when adopting the UN Charter and uh, international human rights <coughs> treaties. The challenges now then are not so much uh, you know, whether human rights belongs on this agenda, it's more um, how human rights are inscribed in the new framework. We have actually written all these rights because so 40, 50 years ago states pigeonholed them. At, that, at the time when they were framed, they were pigeonholed for political reasons. And we sort of played that card for long enough. And we still live in as civil society actors sort of play that card. And even in human rights organizations, we sort of ask, we still make this artificial divide. And I think the post-2015 frame is the right time for us to sort of bring this together. These laws that are universal should be able to guide the way business is done anywhere in the world. Because if there were such principles, now the opponents will have the right to sue shell anywhere to say, hey, you mess up my place. In fact, Nigeria will not even collude with shell to do what they did. I think that if human rights-based approach is enshrined in the framework, post framework, those that are supporting Nigerian government to steal land in Ogoni will not do it because they will think about the people. What will the people eat? What are they living for? What future do they have? Why are there first class and second class citizens in Nigeria? The land to development provides an important framework for development cooperation. One that potentially allows us to move away from a donor-recipient framework or voluntary partnerships towards a rights-based approach to financial transfers beyond ODA, in line with the principles of common but differentiated responsibilities and polluter pay. One of the problems of the MDGs was that it did not address macroeconomic policy. It set targets within a context without actually challenging that context. And so you were supposed to you know, have uh, absolute poverty, but without actually changing the kind of economic policies that created poverty.